everybody, Mike B here, got your Friday TRF race of the day. Friday night, actually, spring, uh, springboard mile for two-year-olds at Remington Park. We're gonna close out the Friday night card at Remington with the springboard mile, $300,000 purse, a two-turn mile for the two-year-olds on the main track. Let's take a look at this field of nine uh, two-year-old Colts entered for the springboard mile. Uh, kind of a wide open race here, several horses shipping in here. Probably make things uh, you know tough on the locals in here. Uh, morning line favorite, the number eight, Otto the Conqueror for Steve Asmussen. Tyler Gaffalione has them out. He's five to two on the morning line. He comes into this off of back-to-back -back wins. Uh, the most recent of those on the front end uh, over a sloppy track going seven furlongs. It's going to be his first start around two turns. First start at a mile. Uh, but he's coming coming off of uh, with some really good form off of a fast race. In his most recent start, other horses shipping in here. Uh, the number three, Gettysburg Address, is in for uh, Brad Cox, dropping out of a graded stakes race, also on a wet track. You have Raging Torrent coming in from Southern California for trainer Doug O'Neill. He made his most recent start at the Breeders' Cup. Um, so, you know, some really nice horses shipping in to run in this uh, springboard mile. Uh, it probably makes things hard on, on the locals, uh, but we'll see, you know, how that all plays out. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector before we move on. Um, there does appear to be plenty of speed in here. Time form U.S., you see the uh, red bar there. They, they're, project, they're projecting this race to be run at a fast pace. I won't disagree with that. Uh, Glenn Gary, the number five, time form U.S., believes that this horse is going to make the, the running in this race. He is stretching out off of a stakes win in his most recent start, going six furlongs at Keeneland. Last two races, buyer speed figures of 85 and 86. He's one of the uh, fastest horses in this race. He's undefeated to this point. He's never been beyond six furlongs. This will be his first start around two turns. I do think they're going to use his speed out of there, as we've already mentioned, out of the Conqueror. He's made three starts in Kentucky for Asmussen. He's been involved on the pace in all three of those. The most recent, a wire-to-wire -wire win going seven furlongs in the slop. He's got plenty of speed. Um, I doubt that they're going to be raiding him here, even though this is his two-turn debut. Um, even the other sh horse shipping in uh, from Kentucky, Gettysburg addressed the three. This is a horse who just set a pretty quick pace, I thought, in the grade three street sense over a wet track. That was his first start around two turns. Um, it's a race where the fractions may not look that fast, but he seemed like he was moving right along on a clear early lead in that race. Went to closers, uh, totally uh, fell apart in the stretch there, and the one-two finishers came from far back to fill out that exact. So I suspect that uh, he could go forward in here. Even Fidget, the horse that's uh, drawn to the rail also for Brad Cox, he's not as fast as some of the other horses in here. And you see on the pace projector, they have him, you know, sort of back towards the, the tail end of this field early. Um, but this is a horse who's shown tactical speed in his two most recent starts. I don't think he's going to be, you know, totally outrun. He's got a great post here. If he can get out of the gate well in here and sort of um, – Come out of there running towards the first turn. He could fall into a really good trip in this race. Um, pretty interesting field, though. Let's start out talking about Fidget, who we were just sort of alluding to. There is eight to one on the line for, for trainer Brad Cox. Dirt debut in his most recent start, and we'll take a look at the replay uh, of this race right now. This horse runs pretty well here. This is not a fast pace. Um, Fidget got a really good trip in here, just got right up close, tracked the early leader on the outside all the way, ranged up to him. Um, actually on the back stretch, and he had this thing took him, taken over uh, into the far turn. Um, took on a challenge from this runner-up. He's not going to let this horse get by. Um, he's going to hold him all the way. It's it's far back to the others in here. This is a, a pretty good performance for Fidget. It's a 74 buyer speed figure. His prior win, his maiden win in, a, in, his, mo in his start uh, before they switched to dirt last time was on the grass, but sort of a similar kind of race he ran there. Sat right up uh, on the pace on the outside, fought for it in the stretch, turned away his challenger uh, down to the wire and, and got the job done. I, I like each of his last two starts. I realize he's going to have to take a step forward in here, but he's got a great post position. I feel like he's the kind of horse who just might be a little bit better than he looks on paper. Um, and Fidget's the kind of horse that, that anywhere near that 8-1 to one morning line is the kind of horse I'll be using in this springboard mile. The number two is my buddy Mel. He's one of the tougher horses to make a case for in here. He is a two-time winner. Um, both of those wins sprinting. They did just run him in the clever Trevor in his most recent start. And he did well to get second in there at 15 to 1. But he also had a really clean trip into that race. The pace was fast. He sat back off of it. And he did his best through the stretch um, with a sort of an inside run in there. He, to me, he just wasn't good enough. He did well to get second there. I wouldn't be betting him off of that performance, even if the pace is um, fast in this spot as well. Gettysburg addresses the three. I don't think you're going to get the 6 to 1 morning line. Um, we'll see how that all plays out. Brad Cox trains. Flavian Pratt's going to come in to ride this horse. 
um, like this horse's debut at Alice Park Sprinting, mostly because it wasn't a you know super fast race. I just liked it because this is a horse who um, showed that he could sit um, off some horses in that race. He got away fine uh, in that from the gate in that race, but he just settled uh, on the rail behind the behind the lead. He got a clear run uh, moving up around the turn there. Came three wide to the stretch. Um, I thought it was really game to close that thing down at the end. I thought that was a pretty good debut for this horse. They gave him a little time after that. They ran him right back in the street sense around two turns um, in his next start on, at the end of October. And again, I mean, if you go back and, and watch the replay, it's on a wet track, first of all. The pace, to me, looked pretty solid. They came out of there running with this horse. They put him on the lead. I didn't think he was walking in there. I thought that pace was pretty solid. He had him all stretched out early. They came for him around the final turn. You could tell at the top of the stretch he wasn't going to last. He was really tired in there. But again, it was a closer's race. I thought he went a legitimate pace in there. I thought he ran fine, and I think he could run even better in this spot. And I, again, I just like the fact that he showed in his debut. He doesn't need the lead to be effective, so maybe he'll fall into a trip this time. Magic Grant is the four. Uh, this is sort of the maybe the leader of the local horses here, and he won the local prep uh, for this uh, springboard mile, the Clever Trevor. That's a seven furlong race. We'll take a look at the replay of the uh, Clever Trevor right now, the stretch run of that race, because Magic Grant, he runs, you know, pretty well in here. You can see in the stretch, he's easily going to take over from these horses and sort of get away to a four and a half length victory at the end. That's my buddy Mel, um, who's going to down on towards the inside there, who's going to be uh, clearly second best, but never a real threat to Magic Grant here. This horse ran well in here. I think the takeaway, though, from the uh, Clever Trevor, and, and remember, this horse was 23 to one in that race, and he was a maiden on the way in and just a second career start, but that was a fast and competitive pace early. There were several horses involved. This horse just sat at the back and then came running. I thought he kind of took advantage of that. He certainly ran well. He certainly took a step forward from his debut, but he also took advantage. The, the flip side of that is he's very lightly raced. He's bred to stretch out, and he might have a fast pace in front of him here. Um, I also feel like you're going to do better than that 8-1 to one morning line suggests. The number five is Glenn Gary. Uh, we talked about this horse a little bit at the open. He's undefeated on the way and two blowout wins at Prairie Meadows to, be, to begin his career. And then this race, we'll take a look at the, uh, the Bowman Mill and his most recent start. They took him to Keeneland, gave him a tougher test in this race, but he still took money in here. It's a six furlong sprint. Um, got off to a good start, but he just let a, a horse go to his inside so he could get out and track that horse from the outside. I liked the ride that Saez gave him that day. And then um, he just drove to the lead in the upper stretch there, as you see in the replay. He's very game here. The runner-up's really trying hard to catch him. This horse is digging in, and he's going to hold on at the end with an 85 buyer speed. He ran fine in here. He's going to have to stretch out for this race. He's going to have to do it uh, with uh, some speed uh, surrounding him in here. I think this pace could be fast, as the pace projector suge suggests, and that could work against him, but I won't knock what this horse has done so far. We'll see if he gets the mile. Raging Torrent is the sixth. Uh, this horse is, is shipping in off of a couple of grade one uh, races out in Southern California in his two most recent starts. Um, we'll see what he can do here. It's obviously a much better spot for him. I, I liked his debut. His, his debut win was a five furlong race. Um, it was a very live race. Though. I think there were you know five or six next out winners um, in that field. This horse ran well that day. He got the right kind of trip in there, uh, but he was really game to get the job done and got away from that field at the end. I liked his debut. And since then, the best pal against uh, Prince of Monaco and Muth, and then a grade one Del Mar Futurity, and then a grade one American Pharaoh stretched out. And he just wasn't good enough to win any of those races. I would uh, suggest that this is class relief for this horse. Clearly, they put the blinkers on last time, and it didn't really make much of a difference. He was just no match for those horses. But this is a better spot. The blinkers are going to come right back off. I think uh, Doug O'Neill's found the right spot for this kind of a horse. He'd, you know, be far from a surprise if he won here. He's got the right running style for this race, too. And he's 3-1 to one on the morning line. I guess that's a fair price. I kind of was more interested in other horses. But I like Raging Torrent. I think he can win here. Uh, Rhino Runner is the 7, another one of the local hopes in here. His first two starts both here at Remington Park. Didn't do a whole lot in his career debut going five and a half, but they stretched him out to the two-turn mile on this track in his most recent start. And he ran, you know, really, really well. Robert, Robertino Diodoro uh, was training him at that point. There's a trainer change for this race. But uh, this horse, you can go back and pull the replay. I didn't send it in, uh, you know, for this video. But this horse ran really well, breaking his maiden last time. He was in behind horses early. It looked like he really wanted to go. His rider had a big, big hold on this horse, waiting for some room. He got it early on the backstretch. He went right up to the lead, uh, took that race over early and just never gave that field a chance. Um, 71 buyer speed figure is fine. He's obviously got to do better than that right off of a maiden win against this field, but this horse might be underrated. And as far as the local hopes go, 
Maybe he's the best shot they got. He's 20 to 1 on the line. Out of the Conqueror for Asmussen, your morning line favorite, number eight. He's run well in all three starts. They're all seven furlong races, too, which I think, you know, could be key. It's not like Asmussen started this horse off in short sprints. He started him out going seven. He's kept him going seven. He got the maiden win, two starts back. He had to work uh, pretty hard in that race, but I feel like he ran well there. The horse that he was sort of hooked up with from start to finish was the runner-up in there, a first-time starter for Cox and Judmont. And that horse has a chance to be okay. Um, this horse, out of the country, got away from that horse on the upper stretch. And then, as that horse came back for him again at the end, he managed to dig in and hold on. I like that performance. He obviously took a step forward last time. He did have um, an easier time of it on the lead that day. It was also a wet track. It's you know something that you have to take into consideration, um, whether or not he just you know really moved up. Um, on the off track, but even his debut was good. I mean, he was right up there, part of that pace. Liberal Arts, uh, the horse that finally closed him down uh, at the end, um, you know, is a horse who you will see uh, in the PPs of Gettysburg Address. He came back and he won the grade three street sense um, a couple of starts later. So this horse, all of his starts are good. He's got a fast race on the way in here. He's supposed to be able to stretch out. He's got the pedigree to stretch out. We'll see how fast this pace gets. I think there are some things working against him, and there are some questions, you know, as far as taking a short price goes uh, on a horse like him, but um, he's certainly a major contender in here. Third Street is the nine. He's going to complete the field here. Um, another horse who did run in that clever Trevor uh, that we showed you earlier, and listen, this horse did not run well. He finished eighth of nine that day um, with a 12 buyer speed figure beaten over 26 lengths. On the other hand, uh, that was a really fast and competitive pace. And Third Street was a part of that the entire way. He paid the price in there and he got really tired through the stretch. But he was dueling with the favorite for you know most of that race in there before he got tired. The favorite also finished nowhere. This horse finished nowhere. His form prior to that race was good. He bounced out of it with a win cutting back to five and a half furlongs in his most recent start. And he was almost five to one that day. In some ways, you know, just based on how well he ran in the Clever Trevor, maybe disguised a little bit, that was probably the time to have him at a good price in, an, in a two-life allowance last time um, at almost five to one. But still, he bounced back out of it. He's better than the Clever Trevor makes him look. This might not be the right spot to bet him back, though. They're going to stretch him out to two turns here with a ton of speed to his inside, and it just feels like there's a lot working against him. But um, he's not the kind of horse you want to get totally down on for the clever Trevor. Um, that's the field. This is a, a very interesting race. I think there are a lot of different ways uh, to go in this springboard mile. Before we get the picks up there, remember to please subscribe to the DRF YouTube channel for all of the latest videos. I struggled a little bit with this race. I didn't really want to take the favorite um, out of the conqueror. I think he's a major player here. I just didn't want him if he is going to be the favorite off of a sloppy track win where he just sort of got away easy on the lead. I know it was a fast race. Um, I didn't. I almost put Raging Torrent on top. I decided not to. I'm going to go uh, with the number three Gettysburg address. I like this debut. I think he ran better than it looks in the street since last time. Maybe that wet track did him no favors. This is more. This is a more comfortable spot for this horse, for top connections, and I don't think he needs the lead to be effective. I put him on top. I put Cox's other horse, the one Fidget, second. Try to get him um, in there somewhere at a little bit of a better price, though, uh, in this springboard mile on Friday. Now, I'm a 3-1 in, in this race. Very interesting race. So it's going to close out the card on Friday night at Remington Park. Your approximate post time for the springboard mile, your race of the day, is 10:20. Eastern time. Good luck.